I'm delighted to welcome today Alison Bagley, who is known as the Business Writers Coach. Welcome, Ali. Hello, Elaine. Thank you so much for inviting me on. I'm looking forward to this. You are very welcome. You're looking very bright and bubbly today. I try. In face. I know. Well, I, I've got a window here that even with the blind down, I'm going to have to get more of a blackout blind, I think, because it's just like dazzling. But then again, maybe I just glow. You just glow. <laughs> absolutely. So um, what is a business writer's coach? OK, a business writer's coach is me. It's somebody who is going to help you to get more visibility and more engagement with clients and prospective clients by increasing your writing skills. So we cannot get away from the fact that social media is out there, the digital age is out there, and we all need to produce written content in one way or another, whether that be blogs for social media, articles for magazine, just content posts for social media, the strategy all behind all of that as well, um, creating courses for people who are in services. Creating a course is a great way to go, and I help people to develop and write those. Uh, creating lead magnets for your business. So the PDF that tells the world who you are, what you do, and what you can solve for them, most specifically, how you can solve their problem that you give away free to people when they visit your website. And then you get their email, they go on your email list, you can send them the newsletter, and on we go. Um, and the core thing that I do, that I take on one-to-one uh, -one clients for, is helping you to write your calling card book for your business. So that's the book that tells the world who you serve, how you serve them, how you solve their problems, your journey that has brought you to the point where you are the person to help that, them solve that problem. So it's, it's how-to books almost, but it really is the way to engage with people without actually being in the room with them. So they really get to know, like, and trust you. And then they see what you do. They'll think, oh, they can help me. And your contact details are there and they, then people get in touch. So I always say to people who come to me to write a calling card book, do you not expect this to become a massive seller that's going to provide you with a residual income so that you can retire and just live on the beach forever? You have to kind of be Tony Robbins for that to happen, um, unless you're very famous for some reason, or you make yourself famous in order to sell your book, which is a whole other way of going. Um, so, yeah, I tell people this is about creating a book that you basically give away so that people read it and get to know you and come to work with you as a client. Does that explain what a business coach is, right? Yes, coach is? that's really informative, Ali, and it also puts into context why you would want to write a book to give away because exactly. it's not about you know earning heaps of money it's about awareness isn't it creating awareness and, and and engagement and it's a it's a starting point that you're giving your information without it kind of feeling and seeming very salesy exactly and and the last thing i ever want to do is come across as somebody who's selling i really my my mission is to help people to get their books out there I love my joy moment is when my authors send me a picture of themselves hugging their book which has just arrived in the post and they're so excited that they're jumping up and down with glee because it's there I adore that it's it's the combination of of working together collaborating and creating something entirely new entirely individual entirely bespoke that is there then forever. It's there forever. It's a real marker. So much of what we do as coaches and in service industries is done and gone. And there's no marker to show anything for it. Whereas a book really kind of puts a stamp on who you are and it's there. And there are so many ways you can use it. So how did you get into this, Ali? Because it's quite involved in the so many different um, avenues that you mentioned um, in your introduction there of, of how you could use the writing. So what, what, what led you to, to get into this uh, business writing frame of mind? OK, 
I spent years and years in corporate as a proposals, uh, a proposals writer and manager, which I loved. I loved doing that work, but I was kind of, and I'll tell you what, if you're writing a proposal to win a multi-million pound contract, that is the most creative writing projects that you can ever do. <laughs> that, is, that is storytelling and it's absolute utmost. I loved it. I loved doing the writing of it. I didn't like the corporate toxicity that I was going through and spent many years doing that. And then I had a nasty experience at work that I won't kind of talk about publicly, but it ultimately it led me to have to take a bit of time off to regain my equilibrium and my health. Um, and that was sort of February time, 2020. You forget how many years have gone by since COVID struck, haven't you? Well, we've lost two years just like that, haven't we? Exactly. Well, it depends on your perspective. Uh, the last two years, I have to say, have been incredible for me. And I don't, I, there's no guilt in that. It's just, I, I am very aware that many millions of people have been through horrible things. But I've been very lucky because it enabled me, uh, long story short, to take redundancy from said corporate toxic environment, which gave me enough money to set up my own business and work on building that without having to earn any money for a year. And I know that that was a blessing and it came at exactly the right time for me. I was 56, which is a crazy sort of time to start a new job. I'd had a mortgage for a year. <laughs> so I'd still got like nine years of a mortgage to run. And I was like, ooh, but... I just got to the point where it was time to do what I wanted to do. And I really thought long and hard about exactly what it was I wanted to do. And the one of the ways I did that, and it, it's funny, when I come to the emotional mapping bit, I'll, I'll show you how this kind of connects. What I did was look back on my life to see what I had enjoyed the most. What, what, what part of my working life had given me the most joy? The, the work that I wanted to get up and go and do and it had been when I was a weight loss coach for Weight Watchers yes folks I was a weight loss coach for Weight Watchers for six years I lost six stone with them and then I went to work for them and every week six times a week I would go into a meeting weigh everybody talk them through their ups downs problems help them to refocus to move on to next week and then speak for half an hour um, on various topics, which in the end, I joined the, the training team and wrote all of the kind of guides for the other leaders to use throughout the UK. So writing there as well and, and delivering that half hour talk to people and seeing the cogs going round and the simple things that I used to do like you know thank you for coming today who here is addicted to lettuce you know <laughs> who here likes a glass of wine you know and so all those kind of things and fun I try to make everything fun as well so I really really enjoyed that more than anything else that I'd ever done so I thought okay I like helping people to change their lives in one way or another for the better and my skills are in in writing and and to a certain extent in entertaining <laughs> and making people laugh so I thought okay coaching it has to be I I need to set up my own business as a coach and I whenever I do anything I want to do it well so I really searched around for what kind of co uh, training opportunities they were to become a coach and I ended up choosing two different courses both of them incredibly expensive but I went and did them and I took the best out of both of them where the, the similarities were and everything everything else and became a certified coach and at that point I thought okay now what kind of coach am I so the first funny enough before that the first thing I did was all of the notes I'd got stacks of notes from both lots of training. And when you're a new coach and, and you're talking to people, and I did a lot of kind of pro bono free sessions with people to hone my skills, I'm forever flicking through these 
Sticky notes. <laughs> what what technique is it I'm supposed to use here? What's, oh, I can't remember how to do that one. So I wrote a book called The Coach's Resource Directory, which had all of the techniques in it, what they were best used for and what page they were on. So when I'm on Zoom coaching, giving a slight secret away here, mm-hmm. I could, I mean, I don't need it now, but I could just flick through the book to find what I needed for that particular client at that particular time. And that revolutionized my my life using that. And it has sold many copies to new coaches over the last couple of years. So after that, I'm thinking, right, writing. I'm loving this writing. I'm loving being a coach. I'm good at writing. I have lots of skills, lots of experience. And I've been in business for years, both as self-employed and corporate. And I have a business degree, which I I got when I was four. I went to uni at 40 and spent four years part time with teenage children, balancing two jobs and got a a BA in um, business and finance management. So I knew business, I knew writing. So I kind of combined them all up together in one package and thought, Everybody I know is trying to write stuff for social media, for lead magnets, for everything else. I can help them to do that. I can make these new coaches' life, because I tend to focus on coaches. I can make their life so much easier by giving them the skills that they need to do this well. Now, you can go and pay other people to do your writing for you and your copy for you. And I do write people's lead magnets. That is one of the services that I do offer if you don't want to write it yourself. But that's expensive for somebody who's new and hasn't got a lot of money. So what I wanted to do is make it affordable for new coaches to know how to increase their skills and do it themselves. So I did that by not so much the one-to-one stuff, but creating courses that would enable them to do that. So there's a writing skills course for coaches and business owners. It's £47. I mean, it's not like a huge outlay for somebody, but it gives them all the basics in writing social media posts, effective blogs and articles, um, the outline of writing and and pulling a course together, even um, starting to formulate your own book and putting that all together. So that was the first kind of main course that I did. And I've done several since, including one on building a solid business foundation for your business, resilient business foundation for your business. And at the same time, because I did all the research and learning for creating that course, I thought there's a book here. So um, somebody else who had trained in the same training group as I did, Susan Lane, who's a lovely lady and very clever and really, really specializes in things like risk management, business and that kind of stuff. We came together and we wrote a book called Love Coaching Hate Business, which again, you know, for 15 quid or whatever it is, for a new coach or even a small business owner, because we've also done Love Being the Boss Hate Business, which is a similar book, but if you're a small business owner, not a coach, um, will signpost you to everything you need to have in place as a basis for your business so that you don't have to worry about that. You can just get it done, get it all sorted, have everything rolling along, understand why you need to budget. Here's a template for doing it. Understand why you need to pay taxes, have um, indemnity insurance, Make sure you've got the right software in place. Understand that they're going to charge you year on year for all this stuff. And believe you me, it's more expensive in year two and all that kind of stuff that people need to kind of be aware of. But they're not necessarily because they've come from maybe a health background or any kind of background, but not necessarily a business background. So they don't understand the business side of stuff. So we gave them that book so that they could see which one that was the number one bestseller on amazon which was like oh, fabulous um and it's kind of, what i've discovered is when i learn something myself that i think would be useful for other people to know as well i either write a book on it or a pdf on it and put it out there 
So again, just lately, I've done an awful lot of networking. I've really got into networking and, and wonderful groups, you know, like Jenna and all those lovely groups that and people that I'm meeting in there that's completely uh, changed my business model. So I've written a PDF on the seven key steps to effective networking because people don't really understand what networking is about. It is not about going on and saying, Hi, I'm Ali Bagley. I'm a business coach. And if you come and work with me, it'll cost you this much and I offer that. This is not what networking is about at all. It is about meeting up with a group of people, getting to know who those people are, creating an amazing pot of services and things over here, like a, a, just a lovely bubbling pot of people. So that when you're out and you meet other people and they say, oh, I have this particular need, you go, just go into my pot. Look who I have found. <laughs> and you then recommend and then you're recommending people because you know them and you like them and you trust them. And it is that is what networking is about in, in one way in terms of getting out there and getting sold. But the other one is you have such amazing conversations with people and you learn so much from everybody else that you grow as an individual. And for me, that's been just wonderful. Hearing other people's struggles, understanding what they're going through, listening to the, the 10 minute, you know, star presentation bit. All of those things have helped me to grow as an individual and as a business person. So I wanted to put that out there so that people could understand properly what networking was about. I talk a lot, don't I? <laughs> writers and, and writers talk, talkers write. It's, it's interchangeable. It's a way of communication, isn't it? And I'm it absolutely is. with you on the, the networking thing. I've networked for years and years. I've run many networks over the years myself, uh, various different situations I've been in. I've just created a group. And mm. um, as you say, it's not about who's in the room, but it's who they know that they know. And so it goes on every it, yeah. single week. There's not a, not a week goes by where I don't introduce somebody to somebody. And it's it, it's really, it's it's joyful when you can then see how that their relationship is flourishing because you can see the potential that they this person's got that thing and that's somebody's got that thing and then together they could do a great collaboration or there may be share ideas and if they're the same industry sector and I think all this competition that we we grew up with all the you know the priming the conditioning that we were um, indoctrinated with over many years is now completely turned on its head and it's about collaboration isn't it it's it's the key to everything it really is. I, I even do a masterclass on how collaboration works as a tool for your business. Of course. Because you again, do. I realized that this was something that was really working for me. So I wanted to share how you do it with other people. That's kind of how I work. And uh, so there's all that stuff that I put out. And then there is all the stuff that people come to me for help with. Somebody has uh, actually this morning came to me and asked me for some help in putting together a training presentation she's got to do at a conference. Now, I've created training presentations for years in business, absolutely years. But she didn't want a PowerPoint. She just wants her cards that she can talk through. And just literally in the hour that we were talking, I got enough out of her by asking her the right questions to know exactly what she, her objective was, who her audience were, all the stuff that she wanted to get across to them and was able in three hours this morning to put together a training speech for her, to, to which she's now editing and she's going to come back to me on. And I love, I just, that is so creative for me and I love it. Just weird, weird and wonderful things happen. And I'm very much, oh, shiny object, something mm, new to do. <laughs> wonderful. And it seems like every conversation you have turns into a book. How, how many books have you written now, Ali? Nine. I've written nine, either on my own or in collaboration with others. I have supported or am supporting, oh gosh, I don't know how many other people to write theirs or to produce some sort of written material 
or strategy for their writing or just help to de deliver their skills. So loads, absolutely loads. There's two in the pipeline. I am now writing the book Step-by-Step -step Business Book Mastery. So you don't have to work with me one-to-one. -one. You can buy the book. I've, the course is out already, so you can go and get that if you want to write the book and do it all by yourself. Um, and Stop Clucking and Lay the Damn Egg. Oh, which that's quite a funny story because that's about overcoming procrastination. And I have, <laughs> I have, I thought up that title and started planning the book two years ago. <laughs> and I haven't got to it yet. So I am the perfect person to write a book on procrastination because by the time I write it, I will have overcome the procrastination I've been going through for the last two years in not writing it. To be fair, mostly it's a time issue because I do a lot of stuff because it's not just the writing business. There's this fella over here as well. Yeah, so um, the writing is a bit small. Eliciting, mapping and managing emotions. emotions. Tell us about that. Yeah, that is, um, I run a company with Marco Bertani, who is a lovely Italian fellow, lives in Italy. Uh, called Emotional Geography UK Limited. And six years ago, Marco came up with a methodology for building self-awareness, for growth, for personal and professional development called Geo-Emotional Mapping, which is where you sit down and you draw a map. And you don't have to have any kind of drawing talent. Trust me, he laughs at my drawing talent all the time. Um, and... It's you create the map of your life along the river of your life or the map of your business or your professional career or your relationship. In some courses, we've got people doing the map of their body, the map of loss, all kinds of different maps that we can do. Always a river that you go along through, round or under. Um, and you plot the pivotal moments on that journey that you've had in terms of how you felt in that moment. So this isn't about where you were or who you saw or what you did or anything else. It is simply you record how you feel in that moment. You name the emotion. And then you think about the geographical feature that that resonates with. So, for instance, my first day at work when I was 16 years old, I had to go into London by myself. Horrific. I was absolutely terrified. I didn't know what to, I'd literally left school on Friday, went to work on the Monday. That's what happened when we were young. <laughs> um, and I was terrified. So my, my emotion is fear. And it felt like I had a mountain to climb. That was the geographical element that resonated. So on my map, the day I started work is the mountains of fear. Now, every time I look at that, I know exactly what that is. I know exactly what it's about. What I also know is that I climbed that mountain. I overcame that fear. I learned all kinds of lessons from it and I moved on to the next thing. And that's what happens is people can then go back and they, they just step out of their map and they tell the story. And we do that in live mapping sessions. So either you do the full three hour workshop live with us, which we do four times a year, or you can, you can buy the course, The Magic of Geo-Emotional Mapping, and come on our monthly live map share sessions. Because the sharing is where the magic happens. Because you start telling the story, but you are then detached. And it's funny saying about it being emotional, you actually become detached from the map. So you're telling the story almost as if it's someone else's story. And the number of times people have been going through and they've stopped telling the story and we're like, well, what's happened? Do you know, I've just realised something. And you can see the little pings going off. Um, I did it on a cruise ship in May. I did what we call legacy mapping, which is where um, I go and show people how to do the geo-emotional mapping of their life. But the intention is that they then take that and discuss it with their children because their children get to learn much more about what kind of people their parents are as human beings rather than as parents. It promotes conversation and it enables the asking of questions before it's too late. 
if you know what I mean. Mm. So I, I did this legacy mapping on the cruise ship. And there was one lady there. She started to tell her story and she started crying. Um, and and it, I'm like, are you OK? Yes, yeah, she's I'm fine. She's I've just realized that my whole life I've been trying to please everybody else. Mm. And I never she she'd never really articulated that to herself mm. because she hadn't seen it in front of her. It had probably always been inside, but she brought it out and she said, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I'm going to be different from now on. And we had, you know, a bit of a session on how she was going to be different because you have to take quite a lot of responsibility for people when they have those huge breakthroughs. And I am a trained coach, so I can do that. Um, and I just kind of helped her to make sure that she was okay and that she knew what actions were going to work and not work because I didn't really want to going away and telling everybody, you know, get lost, I'm not doing it anymore because... <laughs> could have caused mm. she needed to ease into it gently mm. so we had that conversation so yeah the 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 emotional mapping is not only great individually so it's a fantastic tool for team building so we're going into a lot of companies now loads in Italy uh, Sambo Camolinari um, I forget so many national firms that are Italian because it started in Italy that we're now going to be doing a lot more of it in the UK. And when you go in and you take a team of people, maybe they don't know each other that well, and they map their professional journey. So you know all those meetings where you go in and everybody goes, hi, I'm Ali, I do this. And then, hi, I'm Bill, I work in HR. Hi, I'm Fred, I'm an accountant. And everybody's going... <laughs> Mm, and just not. really mm. yeah and that no we don't do this we don't let people introduce each other it, themselves at all they have to um listen to how the, the mapping works then they map their professional life in terms of the emotions and then they each share and that team really gets to know each other not only do they get to know the type of people they all are they also get to know what each other's skill sets are and how they, it just, it's magical for team mm. building. And they have fun and they don't even realize what's happened. And they have fun. And the productivity that increases as a result of those people really understanding who each other are, what, what doesn't work for them, what does work for them, what they can do is, is just brilliant. So that's the kind of thing that we're we're working on building now. So that's my other arm. Right, excellent. And that sounds that sounds great that we might be able to do a collaboration because with the disc behavioural profiling that I do, and I'm just launching the disc health formula um, with teams. Um, in fact, I'm giving a talk on Tuesday about it. I'll send you a link through. Um, but it's it's so rewarding, isn't it, when you can see a team of like dishevelled team of you know all sorts. Um, and then start to come together as a team um, and exactly. I've been doing that kind of work for 20 something years and it's yeah. it's wonderful and then it's it's heartwarming to us but the, the, oh. the link between what you do and how I do um, and the health aspect um, sounds an interesting uh, absolutely path yeah, we could we explore. Will, we'll have a chat about that for yeah. sure the other thing as well is when a team has a project to deliver um, it's really, really useful. What we do is we get each team, team member to go into the mindset of one of the stakeholders because mm -hmm. every project has a di different set of stakeholders and see the project from those stakeholders' eyes and map it. And it uh, that, again, helps to really balance the priorities of a project mm -hmm. in terms of, of everybody who's involved in it yeah absolutely and again it all leads to all the roads lead to communication don't they um when i was in corporate and running teams and so on i would i would kind of go through that that process with them as well so you know mm -hmm. let's let's just kind of draw a line see where we're at what what do we need to achieve who's here how we're going to do it what do you know about each other how can you support each other and all, all that kind of stuff not rocket science, is it? It's really not. It really difficult. isn't. It really isn't. But the, the difference with the geo emotional mapping is if you say to somebody, tell us who you are and what your skills are. Whatever comes yeah. out, if you get somebody to tell their professional story from the map. 
everything comes out. Yes. Yeah. And it's in a in a much easier way. A much easier way of that people will tell their story from the map much more comfortably than they will sitting there and talking about themselves. Mm. And of course, me. it's a template then for a book, isn't it? Of course it is. There is already a book called yeah. The Flow of the River, <laughs> which uh, Marco and I wrote, which you get free in a PDF if you come to emotional-geography.com. And you can just download that and find out all about emotional geography and geo emotional mapping and the whole story of how it came to be. But it's very exciting. I'm particularly excited because we're doing a retreat in the Lake District in November. So it's the first time in the UK we've been bringing people together in a really live collaborative environment. And it's two days of games and activities. We call it games and activities that are really going to push people out of their comfort zone and help them to really learn how to collaborate, to communicate and to grow awareness of themselves and others. So it's a wonderful one for anybody who's thinking about um, looking and seeing how it works for team building for their businesses. They want to come along, but it's great for individuals as well who just want to up the ante a bit in their their way of looking at life and what's what's gonna, the website for the retreat ali it's all on www.emotional emotional hyphen geography.com right, there's somebody i can um send to that site somebody i was talking to yesterday will be uh, very interested in that marvelous. marvelous there are eight residential places and eight day tickets. We're only having 16 people because otherwise it'll get out of hand, particularly as the game we're playing on the Saturday night involves splitting everybody up into three teams, laying out ingredients on a table, and each team, one has to produce a starter, one a main course, and one a dessert that will feed all 16 people, <laughs> and one oven, and between them, they have got to make it work and time it and everything else. So that's the kind of thing that we're, we're doing. Meanwhile, you and Marco will uh, crack open the red wine, I expect. Of course, we have to adjudicate. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. So presumably the geomapping, you were doing that when you were in the corporate. And so you, you were doing lots of learning no, while I, you were in corporate. No, literally, I spent, I wish I'd had it. Oh, God, I wish I'd had it in corporate for all the times that I started a new proposal project and the virtual team all came together. If I'd have had that methodology then, particularly for the stakeholder thoughts for putting a proposal together, it would have been, we would have won so much more business as a mm. team because it is such an innovative way of doing it. No, I, I literally qualified as a coach. And then a month later, there was by the, the same company, one of the companies that I trained with had a, a full day public speaking kind of free thingy. And I'll always go and have a look at free stuff that I think will increase my, my capability. So I went along and they put people in breakout rooms and I met Marco in a breakout room. And we literally 15 minutes and we both realised immediately that there was a, a universal spark going off. And I mean that in an entirely platonic way, but a universal spark. And immediately we got in touch with each other. We had a Zoom. I realised that he was your typical Italian romantic visionary wants to change the world with this thing that he's come across, has already gathered a whole group of people that are interested and in, they've done all these things all over the place. The business was shocking. The business side of it was non-existent. <laughs> so what I did was added my business knowledge to it. Um, but at the same time, really trained with him to become a master geographer and know the emotional geography inside out and then since then i've built the website um i've increased the the core membership it introduced all different 
networking thing, every, all sorts of changes have been made that have made it much more of a business, but at the same time, it hasn't lost that heart of over 80 people from speaking 20 different languages from countries all over the world, literally coming together to provide experiences and services in sharing their knowledge and experience to help others grow. And that we really want to keep to the core of that always in what we do. Do you sleep, Ali? Yeah, really well, because I'm absolutely shattered. <laughs> Yeah, it's all very well doing all this stuff um, and kidding ourselves that because we enjoy what we do, we're not working, we're having fun. And that's how I got into trouble with stage four cancer. I was doing exactly the same. All these things, bright, shiny new things, lots of personal development to add to the thousands I, I'd already spent on personal development courses mm. and trainings and all the rest of it. And then one day I finished a, a big project and um, literally within days I had a, my first cancer diagnosis. So please be careful, sweetheart, because although it's lovely oh, to yes. hear all the stories, I can't help but think, oh, my goodness, you know, there's a potential pot of something lurking there. So yeah. just, just just take it easy. What I would say, absolutely, and thank you from my heart, thank you. It's been over two years that I've been doing all of that stuff. So it's not as intense as it sounds. I work from nine till five. I always plan a lunch break in. I always stop two or three times during stuff. I plan things in small packages so that I don't get bored or overwhelmed with what I'm doing. I have lots of time for family and friends and relaxing and everything else. Um, and because now my own writing business, it's buy the books, watch the masterclasses, go on the courses, which are all now automated and online, join the program, which is all automated and online, apart from the initial and uh, initial one to one discovery to find out where to point you first mm -hmm. and a bi-weekly Q and a hour live. It's all automated. Brilliant. It's, it's all done. The only thing that takes me the time is my one-to-one -one clients. And I don't take on more than three of those in any one month because I know that I haven't got enough hours in the day to serve them properly or take care of myself. So that's what I do. I don't want to be a multi, well, if you know, if I won the lottery, I'd live with it. But with my business, I want to earn enough money to live the life I want to live and ultimately only work two or three days a week doing it so that I can spend more time with my family, friends and grandchildren. Brilliant. Very pleased yeah. to hear that. Very pleased. I've said something similar myself because um I'm working with a coach and he said to me, you know, what do you want to earn? How much do you want to work? So I said, well, three days a week. Um, and I know I do more than that now, but I don't do regular hours. I just I just do what I do. And it's kind mm. of my life, really. Um, but I'm very, yeah. very careful because I've, I've had the four different cancers not to put myself in a situation where I'm in overwhelm and, and doing too much and, and all the rest of exactly. it. Exactly. So and and we do things. get overwhelmed, no matter how well yes. you plan or anything yeah. else. You have days of overwhelm. But then I have a superb network of people that I love and are also coaches who I just go and talk to and they yes. make it all better yeah. again. Um, but my business plan is to work 82 hours a month by the end of this year. That's specific. Yeah, I've got it that I can earn the money I need to if I do this, this and this and doing that, that and that will take me 82 hours a month. Wonderful. wonderful. I don't know how many days of the week. I'm not quick enough on maths to work that out. Well, it's 20 hours a week, so a month. So, uh, yeah, 20 hours a 20 week. 20 hours so a week. Three days, three days a week. Right, yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I'm doing as well. And to start that off, I changed my calendar link so people can only book with me three days a week. People can only book in with me now on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday. And yep. I've I've got waiting lists. Um, exactly. I just need to reframe now what it is that I'm doing. And that's yes. what I'm doing with the, with the disc health formula to make it easier that I can teach other people about it. Excellent. And we will have a chat about how to 
collaborate on bringing something brilliant for business. Mm. Yes, very exciting. So um, you've mentioned about the emotional hyphen geography. Is that emotional hyphen geography dot com? Yes, that's your uh, mind. That's the website thing. that we call the Festival of Emotions. For Ali, it's Ali Bagley Coaching dot co dot uk. And, and on there, you'll find master classes. You'll find information about everything I do. Can you, for the for the audio listeners, can you spell your website, please? I can. Okay, so for the emotional geography, it's www.emotional-geography, G-E-O, G-R-A-P-H-Y dot com. And for Ali Bagley Coaching, oh my goodness, it's www.alibagleycoaching.co.uk Perfect. Go to the top of the class. Thank you, Ellie, so much. I can spell. <laughs> Who <Wonderful>. knew? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's been really interesting hearing about what you do and how you help people. So whether people oh. are individuals wanting to write their own story whether they're in corporate struggling with team understanding and um, dynamics and all that stuff and um, you've got something for, for everybody i've got stuff for, for a small and select audience of people who need support with business writing skills team building collaboration and communication fabulous ali bagley thank you so much for your time today you're welcome thank you elaine Yvonne, Elaine, I don't, Elaine. <laughs> you know, this is what happens to a 58 year old woman when she's been concentrating for half an hour. And right. it's even written down. No, I know you're Elaine. No, Just no it's on the screen as well. Now I know. Have a, go and have a lay down, sweetheart. You and who am I? It. <laughs> what? <laughs> I remember when I was um, pregnant with my son, um, I went to make the next appointment for the whatever the thing is before you have a baby I can't remember what it's called um and um she said to me what's your name and I could not for the life of me think what my name was I turned around and my husband's like, <laughs> I never forget his face I said what's my name <laughs> yeah, I'm getting to that point now it's like my mother-in-law used to call my husband who's it <laughs> called everybody who's it who's it what's it and I'm like I go through every name of everybody in the family until I get to the one I want yes Gosh. I went to, through a phase of not calling anybody names in case I call people the wrong names, but there we go. The, and as you, the older you get, the more people you know, and you can't mm -hmm. always grasp it so quickly, can you? We, we've got so much stuff in our head. Anyway, no, we're going on say, now. Yeah, I know. I say, <laughs> thank you, my lovely. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. I, I say flower now. Hello, <laughs> flower. How are you? <laughs> oh, dear. Secret bits of older Brilliant. ladies. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, my lovely. And <laughs> Thank I'll see you, you Flower. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>